GoodNotes 5 is the most popular app when it comes to digital planning on iOS. The app comes with many features and fun ways to embrace digital planning. If you're looking for an in-depth walkthrough of GoodNotes 5 to get started with digital planning, then you've come to the right place. Stay tuned as I share all I know about GoodNotes 5 and how I use it for digital planning. Hey everyone, Creatively Kara here and welcome to my creative journey. I'm so excited to share this video with you all as I've received many comments on my other digital planning videos about how to navigate and use GoodNotes. My digital planning journey started back in 2018 with GoodNotes and I've been using it ever since. I've tried Zoom Notes and Notability, but I always find my way back to GoodNotes. This video is jam-packed with all the things you need to know about GoodNotes 5 for digital planning. I'll have each of the topics timestamped below if you need to skip around. To begin, let's open the app. When you first open it, you'll see your documents, which if you just installed the app may not include much. As you add digital planners and digital stickers to GoodNotes, you may want to organize them. You can use the star to favorite items or you can create folders like I have. To do this, click new and then folder. I've created folders for all my digital planners, stickers, notebooks, and so on. All right. Let's talk about how to get your digital planner into the app. There are two ways you can import your digital planner, direct import from GoodNotes or import from files. In either case, you'll want to have the planner downloaded on your iPad or in a drive like iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. To do a direct import from the app, you'll want to navigate to the button to add a new document in GoodNotes. Then select import. It will open up your files app, so you'll want to locate the planner file and tap it. GoodNotes will begin the import. You can also import the digital planner from the files app. To do this, locate the file and open it. There will be a box with an arrow in the top right corner. Tap this. GoodNotes may appear in the quick apps, but if you don't see it, go down a little and you should see an option for open in GoodNotes. Select this. You'll be redirected to the GoodNotes app. If you have another document open, GoodNotes will prompt you if you want to import to current document or import as new document. You'll want to select import as new document. Then you'll select which folder you want to put it in. Select the one you want. Most often, I immediately import the planner right after I purchase it from a website and download it. So I usually start the import from outside of GoodNotes, but Either way works. Let's talk interface. At the top is the main header with icons on the left and right and the title of the document in the middle. On the left, the four squares will show you all the pages in your digital planner. You can rearrange them here, see your favorites and so on. The search icon allows you to search text and handwriting. Pretty nifty, right? The bookmark icon is handy for pages you need to frequently visit. Most digital planners come with pages linked together so it's easy to navigate, but this is not always the case. That's when I like to use the bookmark icon. I'll tap it and then I can use the four squares and favorites section to easily jump to those pages. The next icon is to export your planner. I don't use this often, but at the end of the year, if you want to export the planner and save it somewhere, this is where you'd go to do that. I will use this feature as well if I want to export one page as an image to import it into Procreate, which is a drawing app to draw out bullet journal spreads. The document title lets you change the name of the document and see other stats about it. To the right are your undo and redo buttons. Pretty self-explanatory there. I don't usually click this as you can double tap with two fingers to undo, which I use the most. Next is a page with a plus icon. This is how you can add a page. You can change whether you want to add it before, after, or as a last page. It defaults to after. Then you can select if you want the current template, which is probably what I use the most when I do use this tool. Honestly, my planners usually come with everything I need, so adding a page like this is not something I typically do. The next tool is something I frequently use. It's a toggle to turn editing mode on and off. When you want to write and make edits in the planner, you'll want the pencil to have a line through it. When you Want to navigate through the planner with all the handy links, you want to have a circle around the pencil. If there is one thing you get out of this video today, let it be this. So many people who start digital planning aren't aware of it and think that their planner's broken because they can't get the links to work. Then we have the ellipses or three dots. These are more settings for your document. If I decide to add a template page, you can copy the page and then paste it in where you want it to go. 
This is helpful for some digital planners as they come with custom sections and templates you can use for those custom sections. I will also use the clear page option when I need to start fresh on the page. Other than that, I don't use too many other features in these settings. Let's move on to the toolbar. Starting on the left, there is the zoom window, which allows you to magnify a small area of your digital planner for easier writing. When using this tool, there is a blue box that appears when writing. This is called the auto advance feature. It allows you to continue writing across without having to manually adjust the zoom. This can be turned off under the three ellipses we were just looking at. Next is the pen tool. There are three options to choose from, fountain, ball, or brush. The pens act similar as they would on paper, and you can adjust the settings on the fountain and brush pen. Personally, I use the ball pen, but you'll have to play with each of them to determine what you like best. You will have three options for color and size to always keep active. The colors change frequently for me, but the nice thing is you can save all your favorites and quickly change them as needed. For size, I usually have a thin, medium, and thick size. You can set these based on your preferences. Then there is the eraser tool with three different sizes. The eraser has features to erase the entire stroke and erase highlighter only. I will toggle these on as needed, but most of the time they stay off. The highlighter tool offers three sizes. If you highlight text in a straight line, the highlighter tool defaults to a perfectly straight line. If you scribble, then that's what you'll get. <laughs> As with the pen tool, you can have three colors preset, but you can always save more and change them easily by tapping on them. The highlighter is transparent, so writing over a highlight mark again will create a darker color. The last thing about the highlighter tool is that it defaults to lay behind objects or text. This is helpful for text and transparent stickers. The shape tool allows you to quickly draw shapes. If you do it carefully, you can create a perfect square or circle, but the tool is not always 100% accurate. You can adjust original shapes as well if you didn't quite get the shape you wanted. There are a few settings here where you can require hold to snap. I always have this turned off. Snap to other shapes, which helps you connect shapes easily, and fill color. I will toggle fill color on and off depending on what I need. The lasso tool is my best friend in GoodNotes. I use the lasso tool all the time time. This will help you move text, images, and even your handwriting around. You can toggle any of those three items on and off in the settings. I will do this when I need to move something I wrote over a digital sticker. You can also adjust objects you select. Circle an object, text, or writing, then tap in the circle. A bar will appear with options to make adjustments. You can cut, copy, delete, resize, change the color of the text or handwriting, take a screenshot. For handwriting, you can convert to text. And finally, you can add the item as an element. This takes us into the next tool. GoodNotes has an element tool where you can save digital stickers, text, or handwriting to use again and again easily. I like to save my go-to digital stickers here. You can also create folders to keep everything organized. This tool is really helpful for digital bullet journaling as you can create a setup you like with a pen tool and then save it as an element to use again. There is also this double rectangle icon in the top right. When you click that, it will move the elements box to the side so you can use your planner and elements side by side. The image tool is fairly straightforward. You can tap on the planner and a box will appear to add your recent photos or a photo from a folder. Or you can see recent photos in the toolbar. The elements tool also had this feature. The one thing I use the image tool for the most is to crop my digital stickers. For example, I will have a nice rectangle that I like, but I want to make it look more like washi tape. You can select the image tool, then tap on the image, click crop. There are two options here, rectangle or freehand. For washi tape, I use the freehand to create a ripped effect. I will use a rectangle option when I need to change the shape of a rectangle. I also find myself using the image tool to be able to resize my images. The text tool is next. You can set a default with your favorite font, size, and color if you want to use text instead of writing all the time. However, I usually just like to write. To save a default, make all the settings you want and then tap the boxed T with a heart and select save as default. You can add borders and background colors to your text box if that's something you'd like to do as well. Laser pointer, well, 
I've never used this, but I've never had a need for it. I think it's more for the business side of things or if you need to present something or collaborating with someone. If you have multiple documents open, you'll see them tabbed at the top. You can easily jump between them here. As with the elements tool, you can have multiple notebooks open at once. To do this, tap on the two rectangles found on the document tab and select open in new window. This is helpful if you have two planners you need to open at the same time, or for me, I will use this when I go to set up a month so I can easily move the digital stickers over with the lasso tool. All right, friends, that's all I have for the user interface. Really, once you understand all of those different tools and settings, digital planning is a breeze. Just remember to toggle the edit mode on and off with the pencil tool in the top right corner, use those digital stickers, and really just have fun with it. Each digital planner is gonna be a little different in how it navigates and how it functions. So be sure to read the instructions the digital creator provides when you buy your digital planner. I will be making another video soon with tips and tricks I frequently use as I plan. Let me know if you have any questions or if there are any specific things you'd like to see. Be sure to like this video and share it with a friend and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.